Hey reviewers and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys have been well. Got a bit of sunshine today over here in the UK. Even though it's pretty cold, I definitely want to get out and do this review for you. So today we're going to be doing the full review of the BMW S1000XR. This is the T variant and it's the 2020 model. So this one was quite heavily updated from the Gen 1. So this is now a Gen 2 bike and some of the key features, it's got a new flexi frame and they managed to shave off uh, for 2020 10 kilograms which is more than I can say for myself and the bike feels surprisingly agile um, it weighs in it as I say 205 when it's dry and wet and fueled and probably with a few extras on it you're looking at around 225 226 kg but it feels very very light very very light to touch it's definitely one of those where you can just counter steer your way around and it's it's super super light and I guess we'll start with then who it's kind of aimed at because Although it's been a very popular bike, some people, I would say, are not quite sure what it's meant to be. Is it an S1000XR in a slightly different frock? Or is it a GS? Is it a proper touring bike? And it's, it's kind of in between of both. But I would say if you had a slider between touring and sports, it's at the very far end, really, of sports because probably 80% of the bike's makeup is BMW S1000 RR. So it shares the same engine, albeit without the shift cam technology. But if you look at the exhaust system and all the rest of it, it's all basically the same lump. They retuned it so it doesn't make quite the same peak horsepower, uh, which I'll come on to in a little bit. I'll do an engine section on it. But overall, it's, it's very, very focused. You've got incredibly well-equipped suspension and components on it, all the gadgetry. But without being a chin down, arse up type position, it gives you all of the power, but in a more usable chassis and a much more comfortable scenario. And I've come from a background of GSXR thousands and I've tuned them. And we were looking at probably like back in the day, like 180 at the wheel, which was super fast back then. Um, you know, straight through system and the rest of it. But I definitely wanted something where I've got the power, but I've also got the comfort. And for me, this ticked those boxes incredibly well. It was one of those where I took it out for a test drive and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a bit of me. Love that bike. Um, so I went for it and I don't regret it in any way, shape or form. It's absolutely wicked. So who is it aimed at then? It's aimed at somebody who wants sporty bike, but you can do touring in it as well. And it literally ticks those boxes. So the riding position, although it's a bit unique on this bike, and I'm going to do some cuts to it throughout the ride. So you'll see what we're talking about as we go. But the seat on it is a little bit unique so and and stay with me on this one because it might sound a bit strange but my, most bikes you basically sit on the bike whereas this bike you kind of sit in the bike uh, the seat's kind of sculpted out um, and it's very very comfortable and you can still kind of move side to side although not as easily as a, as a proper super sport i might add that um, but it is super super comfortable um, it's not as comfortable as some of the bikes that I've, that I've test driven in 2020, um, but it is comfortable. I mean, I've, I've quite frequently done a couple of two hour rides on it and I've still been good at the end. I feel like they probably could have done a bit more with the seat, if I'm honest with you. Um, it could be a little bit more comfortable. I know BMW sell a somewhat three, four hundred pound M seat, which I'm sure is wonderful. Um, but I haven't tried it out, so I can't tell you what it's like, to be honest. But overall, yeah, it's pretty decent. But the riding position is spot on. So it's very much kind of a sit up position, a little bit leant forward, but there's no pressure whatsoever on your wrists, no pressure on your back at all. Um, for my legs, and I'm, I'm six foot four, so you know, I'm, I'm pretty tall. It's not cramped in any way, shape or form. That is spot on, I really like that. Um, so yeah, ergonomics, absolutely brilliant. You've got that six and a half inch TFT display at the front there and i really, really like that system i very much was hanging on to and still do like analog dials on cars and bikes to be honest with you but i like it when they kind of give you a bit of a mix of both and, and bmw have gone all in on this but in terms of the system i genuinely believe it's one of the best out there um at the end of the day it's all going to be subjective and each to their own but i i test a few bikes and i think this one for me is is pretty awesome so We'll do a deeper dive video into that. Um, and there may even be, if you're watching this and it's already out, there may already be done. So there might be a link at the end. So keep on out for that. I'm gonna do a series of three. 
but yeah it's it's a very well equipped bike you've got loads and loads of power so let's go on to the engine side of it then let's talk about that so it's 999 cc and it makes 165 horsepower and it's 114 newton meters of torque so the peak torque's at 9250 rpm and the peak horsepower is right at the top at 11,000 rpm and if you can see that here that's pretty much red line so it is quite a buzzy bike it's not a gs kind of super low down torque where you can just pull 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 like instantly but make no mistake it has a ton of power it's just a buzzier ride um, i know some people have talked about the vibrations on the bike and i would say yeah there is probably a little bit of that but maybe it's just me being a bit more old school but if you're driving a fast car or a fast bike and it's just nothing to it i mean i don't know are you, are you riding a kind of extreme machine it's only really between like i would say like two and four thousand rpm that i've noticed it um and if you're going for it especially if you're on a track day you are not going to notice a bit of vibration in the bars i, I can tell you that you're just not I haven't ridden the older models, so I can't say I know that there's a, there's a huge difference between them, but I can barely feel anything. And to be fair, if you couldn't feel anything in these bars when you're riding a bike, I'd be a bit worried. So, yeah, spot on for that. In terms of equipment then, there's two versions of this bike you can go for. There's an, a base model XR, if you like, and that starts from 14,300, just to kind of keep it simple. It's around there. Um, and I think that would start in the, in the ice grey colour. You can go for racing red, which is this one, but I think it's like 300 quid to add it. But that bike comes with the TFT. It comes with the switchable rider modes, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Yeah, so you get a ton of equipment with it then. You get the TFT, you get the switchable rider modes, you get the cornering ABS, you get the traction control. You get a lot of really cool features on this bike as standard. The T version, which is this one, comes with quite a bit more and i'm not going to necessarily get all of them right on the first go here uh, i'm just going to mention a few of the key ones which i think are important so you get a center stand which i think is is pretty imperative on a bike like this it's great for maintenance as well um, you get the heated grips which on this bike i also think is a, is a kind of essential really um, you also get the dynamic suspension like pro setting if you like which is just over here so i can actually change it between dynamic and road mode now most people probably think well am i that fussed about it i guess it depends on what you're going to use the bike for um, you still get uh, dynamic esa on the bike when you switch through the modes so if you switch through the modes here you can go into dynamic and i've unlocked dynamic pro on mine as well and of course you've got a rain mode but the suspension part of it is independent of that so if you wanted for example the i'm just going to stop here for this guy Uh, maybe we shouldn't have stopped here. Let's just get past them, shall we? It might be a while. Right, so you, st you can still change the suspension then if you go through the settings, but the dynamic ESA Pro feature here is independent. So you can have it in a, hey chap, you can have it in a road power mode you can have a suspension in dynamic and it tightens things up so if you're looking for that kind of sportier bike feel it does that i wouldn't say in any way though that this bike is wallowy it is not it's not a wallowy uh, touring type bike the best way i could describe this bike is that they've taken the s1000rr they've given it a more comfortable riding position but it is very much as fast as pretty much any of those bikes unless you are on a track but even then as i say on one of my other links check out a guy called cuban rider because he does track days and he's got a modified version of this and it is absolutely rapid it is lightning and he shows you just how capable what one of these is on a track or how one of these is on a track so check out that guy but yeah it's super rapid so basically with this bike you get a great amount of comfort you get a great amount of gadgets you've got awesome power and i do mean truly truly awesome power when you need it 
you do need to kind of push it to go through the rev range a little bit but I would say yeah it's absolutely spot on the GS is probably to give it a bit of a comparison yeah it's a heavier bike but it's also a bit more comfortable um, and the GS would give you a lot more low-end grunt this you pretty much do need to build it up although the fueling is pretty good um, we're gonna do a bit of more town riding down here at the end Um, but yeah, the, no, the fueling's pretty spot on. You do get a little bit of, of uh, kind of snatchiness at super low speeds when you're in, say, first gear. Uh, but for the most part, it's very, very good. The GS, however, would give you a bit more comfort for perhaps longer touring. And that more capable uh, torque at lower RPM would definitely come in handy. This, however, as you see, we just kind of put it on the 6th here. And I've got plenty of torque. I mean, it is a 50, but if I just tiny twist of the wrist there it picks up very very nicely so by no means is it sluggish however the characteristic of this bike is that you're going to treat it like a super sport really i suppose you know it really comes alive at around 6000 rpm and i believe that's when the valves in the exhaust system open up so it becomes less restrictive and you get a really lovely kind of noise from it um and it absolutely rips your head off from that point until 11,000 RPM and probably even slightly more if you wanted to take it in there a tad. Um, it is relentless. It's like going into warp speed. It's not one of those where you start getting to the top of the rev range and it pulls off. This is like gravity. It's like a black hole. It pulls harder and harder as you get to the, to the key point there. Um, gee, these heated grips are literally melting my hand, but away for Iceland man there put them into two see I thought these would be uh, perfect for today's temperature but they are <laughs> they are efficient let's put it that way so yeah power and riding style it's, it's brilliant power economy wise I reckon I get around 40 to 50 on this depending on the style of riding that I'm doing um, I think that's pretty good the tank's 20 litre, uh, range-wise you're meant to get around 200, I reckon I probably get between 150 and 200 out of a tank, but she's still a baby, we're about a thousand miles into this one, it's had its first service and Dynamic Pro's been unlocked. So let's talk about some of those switchable modes then, uh, I'm just going to get around this bit here and then we'll check in. Right, so let's talk about some of these modes then and, and some of the toys and stuff you've got on the bike. So, as standard, you're going to have three switchable driver modes. You're going to have your rain mode, you're going to have your road mode and dynamic. And once you get your first service as well, you can unlock dynamic pro. And as I say, we're going to do a deeper dive video anyway, but the dynamic pro gives you the ability to dial in every one of those settings individually. Um, I'm going to cut to some of this so you can see it as we go. Um, I don't use Dynamic Pro that often at the moment, but then again, it is absolutely freezing around here, so I'm not looking to put down a ton of power at the moment. But the rider modes are great. Road is literally jack of all trades. Think of it as that. So it's comfortable. You've got plenty of power. So no complaints there whatsoever. Um, dynamic just sharpens things up. So you'll find that the throttle response is a bit, bit quicker. Um, the suspension, the dynamic ESA, that sharpens up as well. I was talking about some of the features as well on the TE that you get over the others. So heated grips, um, you get the Dynamic Pro suspension, you get the Shift Assist Pro from BMW as well, and that's a big one. So you get the quick shifter up and down. And I think that's absolutely awesome on this bike. I've never actually used the system on any other bike, which I would say is quite as smooth. There's not a lot in it, uh, and it's by no means perfect. Sometimes the uh, the gears, you know, finding neutral is a bit of a pick. That's just the reality of it. But uh, in terms of functional, when you're riding a bike, it's absolutely wicked. It's very, very smooth and it's it just feels well made and expensive. So definitely a plus on that side of it. Uh, center stand I mentioned for the TE as well. That's pretty cool. In terms of some other bits you've got on this bike then, you've got BMW connected drive. Uh, the application that you can get so like the motor outside of it a bit like what you get for the cars um, I'm going to cut that I did a recording of it I'm not going to do a massive deep dive but effectively you can pair your 
mobile phone to the bike and that's on Android and iOS. You can have turn by turn navigation on there so you don't need to go for the expensive navigation. And something else the TE gets as well is that navigation prep at the front there. Um, another bit of gadgetry that you get on the bike as well is the keyless ride on the TE. Um, so the key is very much in my pocket. You can put it in this cubby hole that they've got down here. However, everybody says if you're going to put it in there, just don't forget it because if you leave your key there, someone can quite literally just start your bike up and off they go. Uh, and you're probably not going to get it back for a while. That being said though, uh, my bike, I don't know if it's changed, so make sure you check if you're going to buy one of these. My bike came with the data tool tracking tracker. Uh, a standard so you've got that included and I've got that all hooked up so I've got, you've got live tracking on there and it's great to see where you've been it also does things like calculates your, your trip time and, and average speed all those kind of things so if you're using it for insurance purposes as well that's pretty awesome handling wise I mean obviously I can't put it down today uh, too hard I want to keep the rubber down um, it's absolutely impeccable it really really is uh, as I say, treat it like a super sport bike. You can genuinely throw this into corners and it handles just like a super sport. They may have a slight edge on a track, but in real world application, I would say there is probably very, very little that separates this from any super sport litre bike. Very, very little. Um, the power is gonna be very similar. This has got slightly more usable torque lower down than most super bikes. So unless you're your mates that you're going out with are Rossi and are going probably well above what they should be there is very little that's going to separate you from them very very little it's going to get down to this 30 there we go so there's going to be very very little separating you from them this is what I was saying as well by the way and I probably could go a gear lower but you get a tiny bit of snatchiness every now and again uh, when it's at lower RPM uh, I think that's probably to do with something with the, the exhaust system and the way they kind of restrict things. Uh, but that's just kind of how it is these days. Speaking of the exhaust on the bike, it's an okay sound. I have kind of critiqued it in um, some of the Triumph videos that I did because I think it's Euro 5 now. But the latest regulations on exhausts, they basically quiet them down. And what BMW have done, have fitted a, like a, a twin valve, I think it is on this. Uh, electronic system where I believe it's below 6,000 rpm those valves are closed so you don't really get much kind of burble or pops from it but it does come alive over 6,000 rpm and when it opens up down here I'll stay obviously at a low speed and we'll accelerate up so you can hear it a little bit um, but it has got a nice soundtrack I do wish that they'd done a bit more with it though I feel like they're a bit too neutered these days um, let's give it a tiny bit here because we can all right here we go That was barely anything to be fair. That's this is where it kind of comes alive. Yeah, you're just starting to hear it now. But it's not about going super quick today. It's just about kind of showing you the bike. I'm going to be doing track days in the summer. Uh, obviously, lockdown is another bit pending. So um, I'll show you what it's like. I'll probably do Brands Hatch GP. Uh, it's been a while since I've been there, and I'm desperate to kind of get back and do a proper one. But handling-wise, it's an absolute dream. Um, it's super easy you can counter steer your way through life on this bike you barely need to manhandle it ever um, lower speeds and I do mean like super low speeds uh, if you're doing like a full u-turn it can sometimes be a little bit tricky on that but it's not a difficult bike to manage by any means you know sit tall look where you're going and just go um, but I have found that at the lowest speeds, if you're creeping in traffic, sometimes it's just keen to kind of tip over on you a little bit. Um, speaking of tipping over as well, the side stand on this, I know a lot of people have spoken about it. I don't have a massive problem with it. Um, I'll kind of cut to it so you can see, but some people say the bike leans over a bit much on the side stand. You can get, and I'm not naming any brands here, but you can get uh, like feet extenders, I guess, for it if it, if it troubles you that much. Um, I don't think it's a massive problem and if you're going to do maintenance and stuff on it anyway and you've got the the centre stand on it just whack it on the centre stand it's no it's no big deal most of us are going to have these in our garages anyway so yeah it's not exactly an issue things added to the bike I went for the taller windscreen here um, and it adds like something like 
50 mil so it's not exactly a, a massive deal but when you put it into the higher position which this one is it just shot the the wind a little bit more over as opposed to right right in the helmet <laughs> so as opposed to right in your face um so i would probably recommend that you can even get like an extra spoiler that goes on top as well uh, i'm probably going to get one of those as well uh, just to see if that makes a bit of a difference but overall it behaves incredibly well this bike it really really does i would recommend going for the t version over the base model because you do get so many extra toys i mean you even get the cruise control as well which is really really cool um as i say the gps preparation if you're going to be doing that just to recap on some of the things as well you get the center stand the heated grips i think they're a very cool thing to have dynamic esa pro as well for the suspension that's a very cool thing to have um coming on to the suspension side of the things then uh, and kind of chassis on the bike it weighs 205 kilograms dry and wet you're looking at around 225 226 depending on where you read uh, i believe that's fully loaded with options so it's not a heavy bike this has got the newer bmw flexi frame on it as well and i have to say the handling is impeccable it really is good it's just kind of point and shoot you can live life counter steering on this and you never need to kind of manhandle it around suspension wise it's got a combination of the mizoki and bmw's dynamic esa um, so that's front and rear electronic suspension and it handles like an absolute dream it is absolutely spot on uh, it's so so good and you can really feel the difference when you switch between road and dynamic modes as well in terms of the braking system on the bike you've got bmw's own uh, four pot calipers at the front that's paired to floating 320 mil disc there and i believe it's 265 disc on the back and again it's a bmw caliper but don't be put off by the fact that they're not a branded like brembo stylema and don't just take my word for it if you're going to look at one of these bikes you're going to test ride it anyway try these brakes out they will blow your mind at how good they are um, honestly i mean i've i've had a variety of different brakes most of the time it's been brembo's on most of the bikes i've had so it's a little bit like well i couldn't have just gone to brembo's but i can assure you you do not need it you do not need it the only thing i can say that i haven't benchmarked is the brakes on a track day and would you see some kind of brake fade on there i don't know maybe we'll see what it's like in the summer when i do brands but for the most part and certainly for road conditions they are phenomenal absolutely phenomenal so the confidence that you get is astounding um, you do get abs system as well and you also get cornering abs on this bike as well and it's got very clever sensors on the bike so it works out the lean angle and that's paired to the dynamic traction control system that bmw provide for this bike as well all of that can be tuned in the settings so you can make it whatever you want really to suit your needs you can also control things like the wheelie control <laughs> its ability to do that kind of stuff um, as i say i'm doing a deeper dive video into the dynamic settings on the bike um, and all of the settings to be fair because if i went through it in this video we'd be there forever um, i'll do a couple of screenshots but the the tft and the system on this bike is astounding uh, you've even got different kind of display modes you can put it into a sport mode in fact we can probably just do that here we've got nothing behind us so if you look at the screen it's going to put that into sport mode there we go so if you can see that there that's the sport dials and with that you get lean angle um, you can see obviously your tachometer perhaps a little bit easier it's a bit more traditional a bit like an analog dial um, you can see your braking on there and loads of other things but again i'll do a deeper dive on that so i don't want to distract away from what we're doing right now just coming on to the lighting side of it then you have got led lighting all around i'm just going to show you a bit of that in the cuts um, i think the front of the bike looks incredible it's got a bit of a kind of fire ant <laughs> praying mantis look to it but the the lights are all new for 2020 version and i think they're brilliant i like the symmetrical look this one's got the pro head lighting as well um, and on the back you don't have a separate light like you do on the uh, older bikes you've got them integrated into the indicators funnily enough right guys so i'm going to do more cuts to it but i want to give you a bit of a a tour of the switch here on this bike then so starting on the left here and i'm going to cut to it you can control your cruise control from here you can also control your dynamic suspension your lighting uh, pro lighting automatic lights 
This is where you've also got, obviously, your horn, your indicator button there as well. And if you've got them, the LED fog lights, which I've got on this bike. So again, I'm going to cut to them. On this side, this is where you can control your heated grips. And you've also got your mode selection and your start there as well. Uh, the actual brake levers on this bike, they're a lovely black colour. I think they're awesome. More manufacturers should do that. And I've got the hand guards on this bike as well. So that's really awesome. So yeah, tank range then. Um, it's a 20 litre tank. Uh, range on it you should be getting between probably 180 and 200 miles I reckon I think I probably get in between that anyway and that's a mixture of riding styles I'm not doing any track days or anything and I have been just kind of bedding in the bike it probably would increase over time as well um, but yeah no it's super super good in terms of its competitors this bike then uh, you're probably looking at Ducati Multistrada um, You've got the Kawasaki range, you've got the Versus and the SX. Now, um, both of those manufacturers and bikes we've got upcoming reviews for as well. Uh, we've just got to wait for things to kind of calm down a bit in the world, but we're going to be doing real world proper bike reviews on those. So it'd be good for a comparison. In terms of the price then and where this sits between those, it sits between them. So the, the Versus, even if you go for the top spec Versus, the Versus will still be a couple of grand cheaper than the top spec version of this and the base versus is like 11 and a bit grand so that's like three grand lower than the base version of this ducati i think kind of starts at the te version of this one so around 16 17 grand um, you can add a few extras to it um, but it is a hell of a bike and, and i'm really looking forward to doing a review on that one you get a lot of bike for it as well so component wise and all the features and bits on it absolutely epic um, how would I say it fares between them well we'll do a proper review comparison but however I would say if you're comparing a Versus to this a Versus would be down on peak power it'll be down on torque um, but it is a cheaper bike the Versus is not as focused as this in terms of how sporty it is this is very much a proper sporty bike and properly properly quick the Multistrada, um, and I'm not biased, I promise you, but it does them all. It's, uh, it's very good. Uh, it's very, very sporty. It's very, very well equipped. But then again, it costs more as well. So there's pros and cons for all of those things, really. And a lot of it's going to come down to your personal choice and, and what you think is good for you and what's important. But keep an eye out for those reviews. And then let me know what you think as well. And in terms of reviews then, um, we've got quite a few manufacturers on board now and there's still loads more coming this year. Um, but we cover pretty much most of the bike range and manufacturers. Um, there are lockdowns and things going on in the world at the moment, as I'm sure you're aware of. So oh, we've got the old plot here. Which I'm sure you're aware of, so uh, we can't do those at the moment. Nice little nod there. Um, but they are planned. Uh, the Multistrada is one of them which is coming up. We've got a whole range of Yamahas to cover. We've got a whole range of Kawasaki's to cover. Um, we've got lots of new BMWs coming out, so cars and bikes. So definitely uh, keep an eye out for that. But let me know what you'd like to see next. I want to kind of gauge a bit more from you guys, the viewers, because that's what's important. And I want to try and tailor the channel for you guys. So honestly, don't be shy. You know, Let me know in the comment section what you think. Um, try and keep it constructive because i'm still starting out and i'm doing my best here for you guys but you know i really want to make it interactive so if there's a bike you're curious about a bike you want to know more about or even if you want to know more about this bike um or any of its features do let me know hey chap okay guys that brings us to the end of our review i hope you enjoyed it uh, if you've got any questions or you'd like to know more don't be afraid let me know in the comment section and if you like the video give it a thumbs up as always stay safe have fun and i'll see you on the next one